So now we have seen examples of the first method of finding the S using geometrical intuition, right? And we did it for a cylinder, and this was relatively easy. So ds was r d dy dz. And then we did it for a sphere, and this was much more complicated because keeping the geometry right is a bit, uh, a bit messy. But we arrived at ds equals r squared sine theta d theta d phi. The second method for finding ds is the easiest one, by looking it up on a table. And I have to admit, in practice, that's what everybody does all the time, okay? Especially if you are using a very commonly used surface. So this is the method I'm going to explain in the option two. Please note that this table will be provided exactly like this in the equation list of the exam, okay? So in this table, if you want to find ds, you have to look at this column, okay? So notice that this row corresponds to cylindrical coordinates and this row corresponds to spherical coordinates. You already saw this table when I talked about finding dv in spherical and cylindrical coordinates, but now we are talking about surface integrals, so we have to look at this column. Now, one thing that should surprise you is that here I'm giving ds as a vector. Notice that this is bold because this is a vector. Okay, and indeed the result has e rho hat, e phi hat, and z hat. So why is this? You will see this later when we talk about calculating the flux. But for now, let's assume that what we need to do is calculate the length of this vector ds. Okay, but still I'm giving here three terms, and here also for the sphere three terms, which is a bit confusing. Well, this is because in spherical coordinates, for example, not only can you specify the surface of a sphere, but you can also specify other things. For example, let's assume we are in spherical coordinates, okay? So you can fix the radius equal to r, and this produces the surface of a sphere, okay? So indeed, when you fix r, little r equals capital R, which is the radius of a sphere, then you get the surface of the sphere. But you can also fix the other two variables. Nothing is stopping you from doing that, right? So what happens? So let's say that here the, the parameters are theta and phi. But what happens if we fix phi and keep now as the parameters little r and theta? So then we are moving the distance to the origin and we are also moving the angle with the z-axis, but we are keeping phi fixed. So this looks a bit strange. So if I draw the x, y, z-axis, so we are keeping phi fixed. So our angle with respect to this x-axis is fixed. Okay, this is a phi zero. So then what we get is that we can change theta from zero to pi, sorry for the drawing here, let me, we can change theta. Or we can also change the radius. So we can be at the origin or we can be a bit, a bit further or a bit further or a bit further. So what we get is, I think it's easier if I draw it independently. What we get is like half a disk, yeah? which to me it reminds me to a uh, abanico, which is something, this is a Spanish word, I think it's called a hand fan, it's typical in Spain, yeah, a fan, which is this thing that you use when it's very hot outside, right? A hand fan, so that's exactly how this looks, like a hand fan, yeah? And in fact, if you are doing like this, you would be changing the fixed constant phi around the set axis, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. So you can define this surface, and then the S, would be different, okay? And on the other hand, if you fix, you have a third option. You may fix theta. So remember here, the two parameters are r and theta. But finally, you can fix theta, and then the two parameters will be r and phi. And how does this look? I'd suggest you pause the video and think about it before I draw it. So it looks like a cone. It looks like a cone because theta is fixed, 
yeah? The angle with the Z axis is fixed, but we can still move up and down the cone by changing Z, and we also can move around the cone by changing Phi. So the surface of a cone can also be described in spherical coordinates. So here the two parameters are R and Phi. Okay? So then this means that by looking at this, this includes the three cases. And how can we distinguish the three cases? It's very easy. Here we are fixing R. So in other words, we could say that dr is zero. We are not changing r. Okay? Here we are fixing phi, so we could say that d phi is zero. And here we are fixing theta, so we could say that d theta is zero. So let's focus, for example, on the case of the surface of a sphere. dr equals zero, so we come here. We look at spherical coordinates, ds, so we look at this, and then we say, okay, dr is zero. So we have a dr here, we have a dr here, so these two terms cancel out. So we end up with r squared sine theta, d phi, d theta. In the direction of er, and let's ignore that for now, you will understand it when we explain the flux. But for now, let's say you are only interested in the length of this vector. So this is exactly ds for the surface of a sphere as we obtained earlier. Okay? That is the ds for the surface of a sphere. So that's how you find it. Now, if you were interested in finding ds in this case, when you fix phi such that d phi equals zero, then what would you do? Let's remove this. So now d phi equals zero. So this is zero and this is zero. So these two terms go away. And the term you are left with is r dr d theta. So that would be indeed this ds here r dr d theta. Okay? And similarly for the cone, you just have to fix d theta equals zero. So therefore you would go here, you would fix d theta equals zero. So this goes away, this goes away, and you would be left only with this term. Okay? So by using this table, you can very quickly find the ds for typical cylinders, typical spheres, or even cones, and so on. Okay? Let's do another example. Let's find what we found here using geometrical intuition, the ds for the outer surface of a cylinder. We found that it's equal to r d phi dz. So how can we look it up in the table? So if we are using the surface of a cylinder, we are keeping r constant, or rho. In this case, this is polar, sorry, this is cylindrical coordinates. So we call the distance from the z-axis, we call it rho. So if we keep rho constant, we are in the outer surface of a cylinder. So if you go into the table, you go to cylindrical coordinates, you look at ds, so we are looking here. I'm saying that we keep rho constant, so d rho goes to zero. So we remove this and this, and we are left with this term, and we are interested in the length of this vector. Okay, so this is rho d phi dz, which is exactly what we found using geometrical intuition. Okay, so I hope that was clear. And see you in the next video, where I'm going to show you the third way of calculating DS.